Welcome to the Violin Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Mungala, where I interview violinists from around the world. If you're new to the podcast, thanks for joining us today. Please be sure to subscribe for future episodes and hit those bell notifications. My guest today is known as That Violin Guy on Instagram. He's known for his improvisation skills, shredded bows, and has performed across the globe with celebrities, Fortune 100 companies, and more. Please give me a warm welcome to Matt Shredder. Matt, good to have you on the podcast. I know I followed you um, for quite some time now on Instagram, but uh, and I'm finally finally got to actually like talk to you face to face. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. That's doing awesome. Great. Yeah. All things considered, you know, great is great is really good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Making the best of every day. Amazing. So, yeah. Matt, I, I want to get to know you because I don't know you all too well. I just know you're you're. You are the the shredder of the violin. Like I know that I've seen like you have music videos on YouTube and even on Instagram where you have like, um, you know, you have a bow that's like kind of rehaired but not really. Like you have yeah. like shredded hairs from like the frog and tip. So we'll, we'll get to that in a moment and how that idea yeah, yeah. kind of came to life. But yep. let's talk about you. Let's talk about where you're from, uh, what you do, where you're based. Yeah. So uh, I grew up, born, and raised in Connecticut, and uh, I picked up the violin when I was three and a half, four years old. And at that time, it was just something I like kind of saw and I like, I was like, I dig that. So I wanted to try it out and my parents bought me a tiny little violin. I tried it out and I learned Suzuki method actually at first. Suzuki for the um, win. So yeah. I was also a Suzuki, Suzuki kid when yes, I was three. Suzuki for the win. Suzuki is like the way for sure. Um, mm -hmm. it gives you a good foundation of like music theory, but also like teaches you how to play by ear. So it's like intonation, I'd world. say as well. Like you get really yeah. good intonation. I mean, those by yeah. because yeah. Of, because with the Suzuki method, you have a lot of good opportunities for ear training. Yeah, it's really yeah. good. Yeah, I think and I think ear training. Obviously, like, I'm a uh, musician who does a lot of improv, so I think playing by ear is like such a valuable skill to have. You know what I mean? Uh, especially in today's world, where like top forty is really popular, and um, all these alternative styles are popular being able to play by ear. There's not necessarily sheet music, there's some music that's out there. Um, so it's just good skill. So I recommend Suzuki to anyone who's like starting violin, you don't know where to start, Suzuki method is definitely the way. Fantastic, yeah. So yeah, and we'll get to all the improvisation that you do and you do a lot of covers, right? So talk, let's talk about yeah. the covers that you do. And, yeah, yeah. And, um, where that where the idea came to be to become Matt Shredder, the, the Shredder Violins, you know, where where did that idea come about? Where you had to have a conversation um, with someone, or was it your, your own doing? <laughs> uh, it's just me, man. Uh, I've always loved awesome. um, rock music. I've loved hip hop, and I've loved. I've just always had a passion for music in general. So, um, growing up, I just taught myself computers and how to use production software and. Um, I remember I was like 16, 15, like even younger than that, even like 12 maybe. I used to play along with David Garrett on the radio and I like learned his whole Rock Symphonies album by ear. And um, that like I fell in love with pop music and the violin. Um, so I wanted to start doing my own thing. So I just put on the radio and played along with whatever I heard and um, just kind of like fine tuned that uh, like skill set. And um, yeah, man, I just combined my love for playing and my love for music, music that I liked and enjoyed. Um, but I do want to note that I actually had a, a background in classical with Suzuki. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I think yeah. I think that's where a lot of people should start. Um, I, I have a respect for classical music, even though like people call me sacrilegious and stuff. I have right. Uh, yeah. And I think all we'll... classical like it's it's where it all started. Um, so I think it's important to have a foundation. And, and pay how much to that before you kind of move on to other stuff, you know. I like I like what you said, and um, you know, obviously Suzuki method and classical music played a big part of your life. I mean, of course you you stemmed from that, and mm -hmm. I think it's like a good starting point for anyone who is listening and who has followed uh, Matt on Instagram, where you see him with the with the shredded bow, with the tip and the and the frog. Um, I, th I think it's a really cool idea aesthetically, visually. I think it's really, really cool and um, really flashy. So um, I, I'm curious to know how you thought of the idea of like chopping your bow hair because in the classical music world, you're like, oh my god. Yeah. So <laughs> you know, even yeah, for me, so I'm like, I, I even like, I even like, 
I'm thinking about I I I'm like kind of my palms are sweating as I say that. Um, so, um, but yeah, but t- tell me your thoughts on that. A lot of people actually uh, they ask me they're like, do you chop your bow hairs with scissors? Because um, they you know, and and I'm like people people don't understand. Uh, I I do a lot of live performing and stuff. So when I'm performing, um, it just kind of happens. Um, so it was something that happened and I didn't do it intentionally at first. I was just kind of playing my heart out and then. I noticed like the, the hairs were popping off um, and people were asking me about it. So I kind of took that and I was like, I guess, you know, it was just something cool. It was gnarly. I was like, why not make a brand off of this? And um, that's how the whole shredder thing started. Um, Which is really cool. Yeah. It's really cool because naturally, you know, bow hairs tend to fly off, let's say, de- depending on humidity, depending on how, you know, how much you yeah, press down yeah. on the bow, yeah. onto the string. So a lot of people, uh, beginners or any like new violinist for that matter may not know that you actually have to get rehairs for your bow yeah, because you, exactly so, what, what you yeah, suggest. So I wouldn't happens. recommend it for a beginner. It's just it's an aesthetic thing. Um, you're supposed to get your bows rehaired, but at this point, I just kind of think of my bows as uh, like trophies, I guess. Um, and I have them on the wall at home, just along the hallway. Um, and as I go through another one, I just put it up and I just don't, I don't know, I, I could rehair bows, but there's just something like that's kind of aesthetically pleasing about seeing a bow that's been used. And I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of like the rock star aesthetic that you're trying to go for too. Like, it's kind of like, um, yeah, you know, it, when you, when you, it, 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 it's it like kind of when yeah. you're going like down a hallway, you see like all the guitars and all like the platinum labels and yeah, stuff. Yeah. I, I can just, I can visualize that in my head that you just have a collection yeah. of bows that are shredded. Although yep. you got, I think you might have to be careful for those uh, those uh, bow bugs. You ever heard of those? Bow bugs. Well, I know that. Let's say if you leave your bow in a in a violin case for a very long time, if it hasn't yeah. been touched for a while, then like these little these little critters will eat your bow hair, will eat the horse hair. But I'm, think... yeah, it's a thing. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, like are I remember I used to called, work. Are they actually called bow bugs? But I I think that's like. That's wild. I'm sure there's like a more official terminology well, yeah, for yeah. it, well, like, <laughs> but I, that's, that's crazy. Wow. It's crazy, yeah. Like if you if you haven't cleaned, I like I know some luthier shops they they have like special services to like clean your actual violin case so that way yeah. they can prevent bow bugs. Like so, um, but no, wow. but I I can see how like yeah, there's something really aesthetic, really cool about it. Like you see all these bows, and I my my guess is that like you can look and refer to that one bow be like oh i remember i had a good time at this you place know I was with at, that bow yeah, yeah yeah i was actually gonna i was actually gonna touch upon this list like specific bows that i have that are really special to me so like there's ones that i've had um you know some bigger shows or whatever that i they're just kind of like um sentimental right that's the word they're they're just sentimental um they're they have like an energy about them that's just like specific to that memory. I don't know. Yeah, I I totally agree with you. It's kind of yeah. like when you have a certain violin or a certain instrument that you kind of connect with that instrument at that one time. It's kind of yeah, a exactly. It's kind yeah. of a very unique feeling where you first hold your instrument and you're like it kind of takes you back to that one moment where you had a yeah. good performance with that instrument or yeah. Um, yeah. Um, do you I your I based on what I saw in your videos and and your YouTube and your Instagram, you you're electric violins, right? But do you also um, have like other electric violins? You have like a five string, or do you just like rely on one? Yeah, like, yeah. Frets? So I I actually love, excuse me, I love acoustic violins. Um, it's actually my favorite to be honest with you. But I I think electric violins are unique, like in their own way. That's why I prefer to like perform with them. Um, I just think they're more fun to, to play. Um, but I think acoustic violins are are just better to like play at when you're at home alone practicing or. You just like you're just playing like by yourself. And, I don't know. There's a certain energy about those that are. It's just more. You feel more connected to the instrument. I like how you said the word energy yeah. because different different genres have different energies. Different instruments have different energies. Talk about um, your. If you can touch upon a little bit about your your journey through different genres and how you kind of made your sound unique and the way you play covers and the way you create your own music unique. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's funny that you, you're asking me this because I'm actually in like the middle of a huge transition right now, um, with the genres that I'm doing. Um, but I've, I've really tried in the past to kind of, um, like 
combine things as much as I can. Um, so like I said, my, my kind of top three, um, I, I kind of go up my music in like my career based off of how like I'm, I'm feeling, I guess. Um, so if I'm feeling a certain type of music at that point in my life, I'll really incorporate that with like the cores of um, like what I already do is so, like hip hop. It's kind of like well, you're focusing uh, on the present. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I try to like mash up several things together to kind of make a sound that people haven't like, like heard before. Um, kind of like the aesthetic too. So I combine like hip hop aesthetic with kind of punk, more grunge aesthetic. So it's like a combo that's, it's just, pe it's not common. You know, people have done it before, but I think with the violin, it makes it really unique. Yeah, especially with, um, you have like black violin where it's combining like violin and hip hop, which is like really yeah. unique. I think they, yeah. you know, they, I, I don't know how old that band is, like maybe over 10 years or even older than that. But like, I remember first, um, like my first album that I bought from Black Violin, I was like so amazed, you know, even as a classical violin, oh, because I, because I loved, because I, growing up, I used to listen to a lot of hip hop, actually. People may not know this about me, but as a violinist, I listened to like Eminem. I listened to something like Exhibit, like as raunchy as that. Like I okay. actually really, really enjoyed, um, really, really enjoyed th those kinds of genres as well. And combining that with violin, that is really, really different. And yeah. I, I can see you're trying to do that. So what are some of the genres that you try combining? Are there any two in particular that you try doing? I've seen you do a little bit of um, like like techno trance and then some rock. So what, um, actually it's funny, before the interview, interview I was doing some research on you and you did the, the, the Bastoven. Yeah, yeah, the Bastoven video. The Bastoven, I uh, thought that was really I, clever. <laughs> uh, classical with uh, hip hop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Can you can you share your thoughts on that? Yeah. So the bass solo video is just this crazy idea I had. I heard this track um, made by Clutch. Shout out to Clutch. He's an awesome guy. He's a producer from New Orleans. He, he originally made that track, and um, so I reached out to him. And I was like, "Can I make a whole music video off of this?" And he gave me the okay. So I had this vision in my head of kind of doing like uh, starting the video out. Something just doing something over the top. You feel me? Like something that people would just be like, what, like, what the hell is this? But something that people would also be like, this is awesome. Um, so I figured I'll start off the video just dressed like classical attire, um, that era of music and like that, you know, the B Baroque era um, and uh, start out. People would just think it's a normal violin video and then like, bam, just hits. And uh, that project ended up being really fun. Um, it, it was pretty successful um, and it was a lot of fun to film and like be creative and go back and forth with everyone. And... Yeah, I think amongst like the classical musicians and of course, you know, I'm only relating it to classical music because I'm a classical musician, but yeah, um, yeah. the idea of music videos, um, you know, we see like violence, like Lindsey Sterling doing like something really crazy with like the dancing with alongside yeah. the you know, alongside the playing and it's like incredibly acrobatic. Yeah, yeah, it's super acrobatic, and then you try to create this vision to come to life into a music video. Talk about that process where you have the idea, or you're collaborating with an artist, like you know, talking to Clutch, and trying to trying to combine those ideas and try to make it into a music video. Can you share your thoughts on how that process yeah, like, is? I mean, it, I mean, it all starts like anything else, like with kind of an idea in your head. Of, hey, no matter how crazy it might seem, you're like, I kind of want to do this. I want to make it a video, so. Um, I guess go through their creative process of going back and forth with someone and having two creative like inputs and like he's the person who originally made the track and then I'm the person who's doing kind of like a re instrumental remix. So having the input from the original creator and then from a, a musician with like a classical background and that, like that particular video, um, that was really cool like being able to, to collaborate like that. Um, and with my videographer as, as well at that time, um, like the day of the shoot and everything. Clutch wasn't there the day of the shoot, but um, being able to collaborate with my videographer on that was great too. That's awesome. And I think your yeah. audience um, truly appreciates the work that you're doing because, you know, you have thousands of subscribers on YouTube. You have thousands of subscribers on Instagram. So, like, you're, you're, no, you're no, you know, you know. 
Yeah. It's a good start. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I'm like, I am, you know, nowhere close to where you are, you know, but like, um, it's, it's, uh, you're also like attracting a certain audience. And I think that, well, in, in a business perspective, you're doing what the market likes and you're just continuing to make more products according exactly. to what the market responds to. So, um, from a business perspective, I know I talk a lot about music business on the violin podcast because it's important. Yeah. Um, you know, during these, during these times, during the pandemic, you know, like how do you, how do you earn money as a musician just in general, not even as a classical musician or violinist per se, but even as a musician. And I think trying to, um, provide a lot of value to your audience, uh, makes a big difference. So can you talk about, uh, the process when, you know, you have an idea, let's say you're writing a new piece of music. How does that process look like when you're, when you're trying to cater to different audiences or even attract new audiences? Uh, I try to structure my music in a way that keeps grabbing people's attention all throughout the whole thing. That's my number one goal when I create. Um, I always want to have people's attention. Um, so if that translates to when I'm writing a song, I'll make sure the beat switches up so much so that, you know, like you just never get bored listening to it. You know what I mean? That's, I think that that's really, really important because people, uh, you're, you know, as a musician and especially from the business perspective, like you were saying, you're an entertainer. So it's your job to make sure that people are entertained. And if you can have fun and be creative in that process, then that's, that's a win-win. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. I think when, if you enjoy the process a lot more, you know, it makes things a whole lot easier. It's kind of like, um, you know, like I mentioned Gary Vaynerchuk in two podcast episodes ago, like, um, if you like what you do, then it's, it's everything will kind of take care of the yeah. rest. And I think he's like a, like a perfect example of like the entrepreneur mindset. But I think that's as a musician, you choose to become a musician because you enjoy doing it to begin it's with. A and it's a passion. Yeah. Right? Nobody wakes up and they're like, Oh, you know, um, I, I want to be a musician, you know, just because I mean, there are, there are people out there like that, but you know what I'm saying? The, Generally, musicians, I think, wake up and they do what they love. It's it's a labor of love, you know. Um, at least that's what it was for me too. When I first started out, it was always a labor of love. I would drive six hours to, to be, be paid two hundred fifty dollars at a gig, um, and people. Would look I know at me that feeling. Crazy. Yeah, and people look at me like I was crazy. I, I was like, I was like, it, it's not, it's not even a thing. You know what I mean? It, it is what it is. It's what I do. Yeah, and of course, when you when you think of if you have a lot of time, yeah. you know, I think time is the biggest factor. Like, if you just do, if you be consistent over a long period of time, yeah, that's it. Then th that's, that's all it, it is. It's consistency. People think, yeah, people think uh, you know everything is overnight too. Like, I have a lot of people like, say, "Oh, you're lucky," or "Oh, you know, you you must have some sort of something." Like, you know, I I used to work at a grocery store for eight twenty five an hour. Um, and I didn't know anyone in the music industry. I grew up in like, like this um, town in the middle of nowhere in Connecticut. Um, and I mean, the thing of it is, you just have to be consistent. Be like with everything you do, uh, no matter what. Like it's content or practicing a passion, or um, it, re it really doesn't matter where uh, where you come from. One hundred, one hundred twenty percent. Truly, yeah. Are there any musicians in your family, or are you the only one? No, I'm I'm the only musician in my family. Uh, my dad plays a little bit of, um, excuse me, my mom plays a little bit of guitar, and my dad uh, sings. Uh, but I'm, you know, the only like musician who performs. But it's great to know that your parents understood the value of music, so that way they introduced it to you at a very young age. Yeah, yeah, definitely. They uh, definitely helped me when I was first starting out and I got my instrument and they were, you know, supportive. So yeah. that's awesome. That's awesome, Matt. You, um, you know, we talked, uh, we touched a little bit on mm -hmm. inspiration. What, what are some of the things that inspire you uh, to pick up your violin every day and to play? Um, I just want to, I want to change the world. Dude. I want to change the world. And you know, it's like a, a lot of people say that, but I, I, I truly feel like that's, that was, God's reason for me on this earth was to, to change something. And I feel that's my responsibility. And I'm, I'm using the talent that the universe gave me to accomplish that mission. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. um, I think that that's 
what really pushes me every day. I'm not doing anything I do for myself. And I'm being 100% straight with you when I say that. I'm doing the thing, every single thing I'm doing, every day when I wake up, I'm doing it for the betterment of my great, great, great grandkids. I'm doing it for the betterment of the world. Um, and that's like my motivator, honestly. Um, and I, I don't want to get too much into stuff, um, but I'm actually launching a whole new brand, a whole new Matt Shredder brand. Um, and I'm starting a, a nonprofit. Um, and there's, I'm having a, a line of violins and stuff and proceeds are going to be going to the nonprofit. I got a lot of like in crazy, like incredible stuff and collabs coming up. Um, I know I've been like super silent on Instagram lately. But right yeah I, do you I want to do you, do you want do you want to give us a sneak peek um i i i don't know honestly you don't know do you, you don't trust me yet you. after 20 minutes <laughs> <laughs> no it's not that far away you won't even have to wait that long probably looking at like october would be the big big launch for everything so oh nice that's yeah close yeah. to when the episode is going to be released anyway so oh um so oh, that's perfect yeah that's perfect. it's gonna be awesome yeah so yeah. um anyways so for anyone who doesn't know who Matt Shredder is, check him out on that violin guy on Instagram because he's going to have some announcements apparently. And um, but uh, without without maybe revealing too much about this nonprofit, can you maybe specify what the vision of this nonprofit is? Like, I mean, obviously, you have a passion for bringing instruments yeah, yeah. into so, people's hands. So, yeah, but, yeah so, can you touch on that? Yeah. So um, I I actually I didn't mention this before in the interview. Um, but uh, now that you mentioned that you're, you're going to be watching this in October, probably. Um, I'll touch upon my, my whole story. Um, so I'm going to be coming forward about the uh, fact that I was adopted. Um, so I was adopted when I was four years old. Um, and I came from uh, a really, really horrible environment. Um, I came from an environment that was really dirty. I didn't have the food I needed. Um, it was abusive. And there's just a lot of horrible things going on. Um, and this nonprofit is going to be helping kids in need uh, who were once in a position that I was. Um, and I want to be able to give back in a way that's through empowering children through creativity and self-expression um, because those are my core beliefs. Of, I love that. You know, that's nice. Um, I think we should all, you know, it sounds super like cliche, but we should all be who we want to be. And express ourselves however we see fit to what we want. Um, free of judgment, self-judgment, judgment from others. Um, so that's gonna be my mission, is spreading that message with my music and, um, and just trying to give back to, you know, I don't know, give back the blessings that, you know, have been given to me, so. That's awesome, Matt. Yeah, I, man. I, I, like, I like the vision and I think, um, I think it's an important one, especially yeah. um, when you cater to the audience. I think there, there, yeah. there could always be more instruments in people's hands. Always, exactly. I think there's never, there's never enough. I yeah. think you could always bring more instruments into more people's hands, and yeah. uh, you know, just provide more joy into people's lives. I think that's that's part of the reason why I I play the violin too, because it's, it has given me so much joy. You got to get to be, you yeah. have to give back in yeah. some way, and I know that the way I can, you know bring joy and bring value to kind of like what you said, like what the greater purpose is, is me being this, uh, the host of this podcast, the creator and producer of this podcast and yeah. trying to reach out to people like you and, you know, just kind of get more, more people involved in like the violin community yeah, via voice. Bring awareness <laughs> to your cause. Yeah. Sure. And I know yeah. that for me that this is kind of like my, my calling. I've, yeah. I've actually had that uh, realization not too long ago. I'm like, you know what? Maybe I you know I've, I kind of I like this. I like in addition yeah. to playing the violin, I know that I can talk to people like you. I can talk to yeah. other other violinists who have amazing stories to share and amazing projects that you know you'll reveal eventually. Um, but uh, yeah, I th I think you know we do we do it for the betterment of the world, pretty much. Um, so. Man, so much to talk about. I wonder if uh, if you can touch base on some of the 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 people that you worked with because you you, uh, you have worked with like Fortune 100 companies and you've worked with celebrities. Yeah. What kind of celebrities? With if you're allowed to give names out, uh, yeah, you yeah. worked with. Uh, so I I just basically, um, you know, 
I think a part of being a musician is in today's world is seizing every single opportunity that comes your way. Um, so a lot of the encounters I've had and a lot of the projects I've been able to work on with celebrities have been uh, either, you know, networking opportunities that uh, have come across or just general, um, like, time and place. Um, yeah, and I think a big part of it too has also been uh, development of myself as an artist, um, my image and everything. Um, that definitely helps uh, progress. Um, so uh, yeah, I've worked with um, Fetty Wap, uh, Neil Patrick Harris, a um, bunch of different companies. I've worked with uh, different hip hop artists, different producers, um, a lot of different people. <laughs> Um, I love Neil Patrick Harris. Neil Patrick Harris, um, he's, yeah, he's, he's fantastic, super, and he's I'm yeah. I'm sure he's super awesome in person. I he's yeah, he uh, uh, how much a mother. Clearly, I think that's one yeah. of the, one, one of my favorite uh, TV sitcoms. You know, yeah. you know Barney Simpson. I think is a uh, great character that he plays. And mm -hmm. um, but you know we haven't really had a guest. You're the first one who actually has worked with like major corporations, like a Fortune 100 company. Yeah, and you. Cater. It's not like your traditional classical setting where you're like you're in an auditorium and everybody is. It's yeah, kind of like yeah. A, it's it's not, it's not like oh, um it's like yeah. a, it's not like a traditional one way conversation where you are the artist and you are providing a product to the audience and the yeah. audience is there to listen, right? So can you talk about that experience of of working with these companies? Yeah. So it's been interesting at times because we're at a weird point in society where um like different genres of music are being more widely accepted into mainstream. Um, so I've been working with some companies, uh, like big companies like True Value and Toyota, um, these are these like big companies and they've been wanting me to like play, play hip hop and play like these things at uh, their events and stuff. And it always, it's great and it's a lot of fun. Uh, it feels strange though, uh, connect, try, like collaborating sometimes with them because I have to keep it like um, pretty G-rated. But at the same time, I still have to like be, you know, myself. Um, so it's it's an interesting mix, but it's a lot of fun. Um, I've had some amazing opportunities uh, come along the past like year and a half, two years, uh, performing us in like crazy places uh, across the world. It's been a blast. Yeah, uh, but I think a big part of uh, the fact that I've been able to work with a wide array of companies is definitely like a lot in um, image and how you like portray yourself, you know, is super important. Marketability. Yeah. Marketability. marketability. Yeah. I think, um, I think once you have a good product, that's when you can actually sell the product. I think without, uh, without becoming a good player or having a good sound or having music to perform, if that is nowhere to be found at the absolute basic, then you're, you're not going to get hired for any of these gigs per se. And you're not you're not going to establish the 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 networking possibilities. You're not going to expand your network because, um, I know networking. for me and you, yeah, and you and maybe maybe you can comment on this where you know you, there you know for me I've I've played a handful of gigs you know I admit, <laughs> and uh, there are some times where I just was not called again, and yeah. it, it it happens too. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And um, even things you think went really well, people, you know, it's, it's happened to me so many times. True. Yeah. It's just the same again, you know. I think also is just, you know, once you fail, is to not be discouraged once you're failing. I think um, yeah. as a violinist, for me, I think we oftentimes, you know, uh, being a violinist is very, it's a very personal thing, mm -hmm. especially when you consider it as a career, because your violin is your voice and your violin is also your way to talk about various topics that are not musically related because, you know, music kind of connects cultures together and yeah, ideas yeah. together and supposed to challenge us in different ways. And I think um, many violinists, even sometimes myself, like I kind of have to kind of disconnect my person personality to, to the music that I'm playing because this is yeah. just its own work. Have you yeah. ever had any experiences where that has happened to you, where you kind of have to disassociate your, like your, your, like disassociate Matt Shredder to like a different piece of music? Um, or Matt Shredder's in every single song, like every single one. <laughs> yeah. 
honestly. Yeah. Yeah, no, and that's first, okay. Yeah, I like I the second one. Yeah, yeah, because honestly, like you know, with classical music, you're we're playing uh, music of, let's say, let's just say it's straight up dead yeah. old white guys. Yeah, from, yeah, from yeah. Europe. That literally straight up, you know, like yeah, yeah. No, yeah. and um, and it's okay. And I think there's become like this really important movement, at least in the classical music world, yeah. where you we're starting to kind of acknowledge that, like, hey, you know, there are some amazing African American composers yeah. and players and yeah and uh yeah it's 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 always an ongoing conversation but yeah um yeah i've noticed that in recent years people are really starting to, to respect the fact that there's an extremely talented uh african-american community of uh musicians specifically string players um yeah many of many um uh, one of my huge inspirations was uh, shanti floyd uh the Mad Violinist. Um, yeah, incredible, absolutely. Incredible, incredible player. player. Yeah. Incredible yeah, and I think, uh, and if, if you you know if you like this conversation, please make sure to hit the subscribe button because we you know we have an interview coming up with, uh, not to spoil anything, but Ty Murray, who's a wonderful African American uh, violinist, and we're gonna have her on the podcast as well. So please be sure to subscribe and stick around for that. But. I want to talk about perhaps your your upcoming projects without re without revealing too much, of course, right? Yeah, With yeah. Um, what talk about the journey of rebranding yourself or creating a new brand? Because again, that's like yeah, another absolutely. music business term, and rebranding yourself from being Matt Shredder to something else. Um, yeah. it's a, that's a that's a major decision that an artist makes when you decide yeah. to kind of do like a one eighty flip into doing something yeah. different. So can you talk about what, what your thoughts are, what you've been thinking about, um, anything that personally happened to you that inspired you to make the switch? So, Yeah, so like I mentioned before, I, I really try to be off, like, as authentic as I can, and I try to make my, like, my career kind of literally <laughs> like images my life, uh, you know, for the most part. Um, so this, this year has, has been a pretty big personal journey growth for me. Um, and I wanted to let that reflect in my art uh, and, and who I am as an artist and, and my brand. Um, so I think it's appropriate, you know, judging by some of the personal, uh, you know, positive growth changes that I've gone through that I also do that with my brand. Um, and I think evolving is one of the most important things you can do as an artist is constantly evolve and constantly change. Um, I mean, that that's pretty much it. That was my inspiration was just a personal growth and trying to evolve, trying to evolve, trying to try to keep up. Um, you know, we're in such like a fast changing world. Um, I think that it's really important that you always keep up with the times always. You know, yeah, I couldn't agree more with you. I think evolution. We always are trying to evolve. You can't I think, say, you yeah, you can't say still. I, even even the greats from like 200, 300 years ago, you know, they they never stood still. They're always trying to be better every day. Yeah, that's something that I was told once before by a teacher of mine. You know, just be better, <laughs> be better every single day, and don't stand still. If you're standing still, if you're not doing anything, then just as good as being dead, you know, to be not to be crass, but um, Facts. but True. anyway, uh, Matt, it's, it's so good to you know finally have you on the podcast. I really, really appreciate it. Um, a couple last notes for someone who have never heard of you before, but you might want to offer them some wisdom on how to play the violin or getting started pursuing uh, their dreams or becoming becoming a violinist like do you have anything to say from your own personal journey to maybe help inspire our audience today yeah um you know i've gone through uh you know quite a bit of of, of things in my music career so far and i'm still young still got a lot to go but um i think the number one thing that has has been a trend of success um in everything that i've ever done in my life professionally and personally has been persistence um you know I'm going to kind of ditch the business stuff for just a second and I'm going to get personal. I'm going to say, sure, that please. please it, doesn't matter, do. it doesn't matter what you're going through. Um, persistence is this like, is the number one 
desirable quality that you could have. If you are persistent, you can get through anything, you can do anything, um, you can be anything, you can be anybody you want. So I think the number one thing, uh, you know, whether you're picking up violin, whether you're picking up guitar, whether you're singing, whether you're trying to get into the college you want to get into or be the next, you know, uh, huge, uh, I don't know, celebrity, um, persistence is always the thing that's going to get you and push you farther and farther. Nice. I, I like that word persistence because I think oftentimes, you know, maybe to the kids or I don't want to say kids because they're not kids, 18, 18 year olds, like the young, the young adults, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the like generation with Z now, I, I, yeah. I'm losing track. Like anything, anyone born post 2002 or something. <laughs> um, I think, you know, we live in this very, very quick world. I think sometimes technology sometimes gets the better of us where we often um, fight the comparison game. Like, oh my gosh, this person is doing this and I'm not doing that. Therefore, I am a terrible violent because I'm not doing this. And that's, of course, not the case. Yeah. And um, that's something yeah. I, I, I personally struggled with extremely uh, in my music career. Um, and, and that was unfortunately one of my main motivators uh, in the very beginning was. Um, you know, was comparing myself to other people, and I felt I wasn't working hard enough. But um, you know, you just have to be patient, and you have to be persistent, like I said before, and, and uh, just trust the process, and you're going to get there. That, that's all it is. That's that period. That's it. Yeah, trusting yourself yeah. too, because well, if you if you don't want to do the work, then then you won't do it, right? But you have to have to trust yourself that no matter you know yeah. you're on your own journey. I know that ev you know I, like. Matt's journey is different yeah. than my journey, but we happen to cross paths during this amazing podcast. And um, just out of, just out of curiosity, to put things into context, how long, um, you know, when you like started your Instagram page and when you started making those videos, how, yeah. how how long did that take you compared to back then and now? Like how many years duration wise? Um, I'm trying to think. Probably. I mean, I started Instagram, like the video stuff and covers and all that, probably when I was like 2014, 2015. So I was like seven. Yeah, here we are six yeah, years six later. Years. Yeah. Um, so it took me from 17 to 20 to like kind of build a fan base and establish myself. And then I started getting some opportunities when I was like 20. And then um, I just kind of seized every opportunity there was and went off of everything, kind of had a plan. And I executed it. And then three years later, like we're here. So four years later, um, probably all in all, like seven years, six years of work. Um, yeah, and you're still but, growing your brand, which is yeah, still amazing. Yeah. You know, like you're just getting started. Uh, but I want to be, uh, you know, I want my, my mission, my brand. Um, I want everything to be like mainstream by the time I'm 30. It's my goal. I think that's a great goal, Matt. Well, Thank you so much for coming on yeah, the, this week's episode of the Violin Podcast. Yeah. Um, where can people learn more about you? How can people get in touch yes, with you? Um, um, for anyone who kind of wanted to, wanted to hit you up and you know, chat about. Feel free to hit me up if you have any questions about violin or music industry or anything on Instagram, at that violin guy, um, or my website. Um, my website doesn't go uh, to me, but it has some different emails on there. Um, you can email me. Uh, there's my YouTube page. I have a bunch of, I just look up Matt Shredder, that violin guy. And yeah. And of, and of course I'll leave all the, right. Yeah. And I, of course I'll leave all the, yeah, I'll leave all the links to Matt's pages in the podcast description notes. And you could always get in touch with him at that violin guy on Instagram, DM him. He's uh, he's got a lot of knowledge about um, and he's doing things very differently which is why i wanted you on the podcast because I've, I've had mostly classical players and i didn't have anyone just yet about i didn't have anyone that's like outside of, and there's my camera okay i'll edit that out <laughs> um i didn't have anyone on the podcast yet regarding like any genres outside of classical so it's okay. kind of like, like a good change of pace and yeah, yeah. for kind of to kind of educate the you know the listeners that like there's there's more out there than just Mozart Beethoven yeah. right yeah. there's Beethoven you know that Matt did but 
which um but anyways yeah go check that video out it's really good um anyways ladies and gentlemen matt shredder thank you so much again uh if you like this episode of the violin podcast please make sure to hit the subscribe button hit the bell notifications and uh for future episodes as i said earlier we're gonna have ty murray uh, on the violin podcast next episode so please make sure to subscribe and also share with anybody and leave comments questions concerns any people that we i should interview and uh and i look forward to talking to you more matt i think uh well, let's hope to maybe build this violent community and you could you know you're, you're officially a part of the violin podcast uh, interviewee community so i appreciate you that. are officially part of the shred cult community the shred cult i love it <laughs>